last week in speaking about salvation, we mentioned that salvation is a process. Uh, we have been saved and we hope to have that salvation fulfilled in heaven, but right now we are in the process working out our salvation with fear and trembling as we read in the scriptures. Healing, like salvation, is a process. We know physical wounds take time to heal, but so do spiritual and psychological ones. In fact, again, the scriptures tell us that creation itself awaits redemption. And our renewal is, of course, in Christ. As part of the redemption of our bodies and souls, Christ is slowly healing. How, did he, how does he do that? Well, he does it principally through the sacraments. And without uh, distracting from this point, it's very important that we emphasize the principal means that Christ has given us for our salvation uh, and our healing are the sacraments, all seven of them. And these sacraments uh, uh, come from, particularly in the sense that I'm going to be speaking about them, from the healing and the renewing, uh, come from particularly uh, that pool that we spoke about last week on Calvary, which is filled with what flowed from the pierced side of Christ, that is, blood and water. We're bathed initially in this pool in the water of baptism. This removes uh, the enmity that exists in our human flesh, which separates us from God, it cleanses us from sin, and it unites us to God through Christ in his mystical body, the church. We can never experience God's grace as fully as he wants us to, or that we need to, without baptism and the sanctifying grace that comes with it. There is such a thing as natural goodness, but there is no supernatural goodness without God's sanctifying grace. We are then healed and fed by the blood of Christ with his body, of course, um, in Holy Communion. As I've said before, the Blessed Sacrament is our medicine. The anointing of the sick is for special occasions, or special need, I should say, of sickness. And the, the Blessed Sacrament is our regular medicine. And we need the food and the medicine of God's grace in the sacrament to keep growing and to heal. And after baptism, we are bathed in the blood of Christ in the sacrament of penance and reconciliation. Confession forgives our sins, but it also gives us strength to avoid sin. That's why we should confess monthly, but especially before those important times in the church year of Easter, Pentecost, the Annunciation, and Christmas. And for our own healing, we'll come back to this in a few minutes, we want to make sure that we confess sins long forgotten. One of the dangers of only confessing what we feel bad about is if we don't feel bad about something because it's so long ago, we've forgotten or we've gotten over it, so to speak, the guilt is still there and still needs to be confessed. There is a further healing, though, that I want to speak about today, especially a kind of prayer that is known as the healing of families. It's also been called the healing of the family tree. But before I talk about that, I want to review what I've been speaking about and the, the foundation I've been building the last two weeks. God is a loving Father that only wants what's best for us. But out of love, we have to have free will. There's no such thing as love without freedom. And He has allowed us to choose what we want for that freedom, even if it's bad for us, and the consequences that come from those choices. And that's what happened after the fall. What happened to man after the fall was not punishments per se, but simply the consequences of having chosen as we did. And that one of these consequences is that mankind falls under the dominion of the devil to whatever degree. And the more serious the sin, that degree is worse. We are also connected to others, so one of the realities of this connection is, is that having come under some degree of dominion of the devil, that can be passed on, and we see that in original sin, that we inherit original sin because of our connection to Adam. But this also occurs by the individual personal sins committed by man, and they're passed on either in the family through that connection or by intimate connections that we form with others. And remember, there's a difference between guilt and consequences. So even if it's from our own personal 
guilt, our own personal sin, where sins are remitted, the guilt for the sins is remitted in confession, but the consequences have to be taken care of separately. So that's why voluntary penance in this life or after death in purgatory purifies us of those things. But one of those consequences is giving the devil access to our life, letting him get, get his claws into us. And therefore, it's not, that is not simply undone by confession, because confession remits the guilt. Ultimately, man cannot save himself. Jesus saves us, but not without our cooperation. And this is where we have been given the power of his most holy name and his precious blood to help us in this. So this prayer of the healing of families combines our own personal repentance and the asking of forgiveness and the receiving of healing from inherited consequences also. Many of the problems that people experience, but by no means all of them, whether that be personally in their families or even in whole societies, are actually the result of the consequences of past personal sins or those of our ancestors. So next Saturday, this coming Saturday, I should say, I'm going to be offering to lead uh, you in this prayer of the healing of families. If you're interested, you may stay a few minutes after Mass. After I greet the people who are leaving immediately, I'll come back in. I have a questionnaire to give you to help you prepare and to give you some instructions so that the prayer will be as fruitful as possible. There are, of course, many ways that we can pray for healing we should do so regularly in our prayers. Regardless if you come on Saturday or not, however, I want to encourage you to not fall into the trap of fear. The fear being that um, because of this dynamic that I'm speaking about, that your salvation is endangered because of the choices of others. And that is not the case. What can separate us from the love of uh, God? Sin and only sin, not Satan. He can make things more difficult, and so we want to try and remove as much of his influence in our lives as possible. But regardless of uh, whether you engage in this prayer or not, or the effects of this prayer, um, there is no reason why any of us cannot make it to heaven if we persevere in God's grace. I also want to be very clear, I am not some kind of Joel Olstein or some other preacher that's trying to tell you, show up on Saturday, do this prayer with us, and all your problems are going to go away, okay? Uh, sometimes our problems are because we just make bad decisions, and we keep making those decisions. There's legitimate psychological wounds, etc., etc. It's not all because of what I'm preaching about, but there is some of that. I personally have experienced the benefits from it. The others that I've been praying this with as I've been warming up to doing with my parish, because I wanted to experiment with other people before I did with my family here. Um, we've all experienced uh, the fruits of this, and uh, therefore I want to share that with you. Remember that God, our loving Father, did not create us to be unhappy. He created us for love, but again, love requires free will, and with free will, the choice of the possibility of the choice of rejecting God's love. For those of us who are penitents and who really want to live the life of faith, hope, and charity which God created us for, then we need redemption, we need healing, which only the Son of Justice, our Lord, Emmanuel, can bring us. He comes to bring us this healing. All we have to do is accept it. 